Hi, good morning. Uh, it's awesome to see all of you here. Again, I said it. You're welcome. Um, but please stand. Let's uh, let's worship our God. sing, let earth resound with heaven's praise, and with one voice, let all creation sing, let every heart, let every tongue, lift up your name, with all creation sing, let earth resound with heaven's praise, and with one voice. Amen. Yeah, we'll see if you like for a good moment. I'm gonna just gonna stand beside the podium. Well, good morning, church. 
It's uh, so great to see everybody out this morning. Uh, welcome to Big Hill Christian Church. Uh, if you're here with us in Sanctuary, we're especially glad that you're here. If you happen to be visiting with us today, we're really especially glad that you're here. On the tables, you will find some uh, visitor cards. So if you are visiting, we'd like to share some information with you, us as a church, or, or share it with the church staff. By all means, use a card to do that. Uh, and whatever you might want to say. Don't say anything, but if you want to relay some information, that's sure, by, by all means, do that. They're on the tables. Uh, it's good to see folks this morning. It's good to see a couple of folks that I haven't seen in a while. It's really glad that you're here. Uh, I look around the room. It's just a, it's a wonderful crowd here this morning. And for those folks joining us on the Facebook live stream, we're glad you're joining us as well. I'm sure that you'll be blessed by our service today. And if you are on live stream, I uh, will pray that you join us again next week, every, uh, every Sunday, 11 o'clock. Uh, so just welcome. Beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, as you might recall, last week, Last Sunday and a week ago last Wednesday, we had a ministry fair. And so if our wants to come up here, please. Uh, and we are going to give out some prizes for those the individuals that went through the ministry fair and checked all of their or got their stamps at all the different booths. You might remember last week we had tables set up around the corners here. And so the plan was to draw uh, four winners. We're going to have an adult man, an adult woman, a young lady or teen young lady and a teen young man. And so Art's going to draw, and I'm going to, you can read, can you, me, you can probably read them better than I can. Matt Weichel. Matt Weichel? Is it Wickle? White Matt, is he here? Oh, Thanksgiving Day, that's okay. So I have four gentlemen here that are helping me. So if you want to take uh, the adult men, it's one of these, and just put it in the wind in the bag, we'll make sure Matt gets that. All right, let's go to adult woman. Sarah Snook. Sarah Snook. Is Sarah here this morning? Oh, uh, ill. So, man, I'm looking at it. So, all right, so Sarah's not here, so take it. Just take both of them and put them in the window back there. It'd be fine. All right. And we'll make sure that Sarah and Matt get those uh, for their gifts. And now for the teen young lady, Arch doing the, the uh, pleasure here. He's mixing them up really good. Grace, Gracie Hall. Gracie. Gracie, yeah, she's, I know she's here. Is she? All right, so Gracie, yeah, this is her brother here. He's going to bring him, take that to her. <laughs> so Gracie, congratulations. And uh, for the t teen young man? Eli Edwards. Eli. Eli Edwards. Is he here? Is Eli you here? <laughs> Eli, Eli is, he's here? And his brother's going to deliver that to him. So it's like a family thing here. <laughs> So, Art did the unbiased uh, drawing on that. So, uh, for those that participate in the ministry fire, we thank you for doing that. A lot of good information was shared, and I'm sure we're going to have another one of those sometime. Um, maybe not, not soon, but maybe in the next uh, several months within the next year. And I'll give you an opportunity to learn more about the activities of church, and give you an opportunity to sign up if you want to help out in different places. So, again, it's good to see you about this morning. Uh, let me pray for us, and move, and we'll serve us and move along. I'll turn it over back to the praise team to lead us in some songs uh, to get our hearts and minds in the right mental state, I guess you'd say, for Jim's message this morning is on uh, faith. Faith matters. And so he hope you got a, a sermon hand, handout. And if you didn't, you raise your hand and make sure the ushers get you one. Anyway, so let me pray, and then we'll be continuing on with the service this morning. Father, we're so thankful to be in your house this morning. We're just grateful to be here. We're grateful you give us the opportunity, the health, the strength to be here. And Father, we need to remember those that weren't able to be here this morning or can't be here this morning for whatever reason. Maybe they're traveling. Uh, maybe they're ill. And I know there's a lot of illness and sickness going around. And we want you to be with each one of those, Father, this morning. Uh, we, we know that you're here today. Father, we thank you for giving us a good Thanksgiving season. And then, Father, I pray that everyone here and everyone listening to my voice had a good time of Thanksgiving. That's thanks and giving as well uh, during this holiday season. And, Father, we look forward to celebrating the birth of your son. Father, we ask that, that we keep that in the middle. And remember, as my mom used to say, uh, Jesus is the reason for the season. And let us never forget that. So, Father, just to continue to be with us, uh, we, again, we thank you for everything you bless us with. Uh, be with the praise team this morning as they lead us in music. And these things we lift up in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand with us. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My 
shame at the door didn't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the father's house prodigals come Shame at the door, didn't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, didn't welcome anymore. You're in the Father's house. Amen. Sometimes, church, I feel like we don't really do that very well. We don't check in our shame at the door. We don't come in here with a spirit that's completely open to worshiping our God because all of our worldly problems seem they, they pile on top of us and it makes us feel lost and broken and, and just unworthy. But here in the Father's house, this is where we're most worthy. This is where he takes all those, those feelings of inadequacy and he, he throws them away. This is us and our God. This is us and our creator. This is our time. This is not Satan's time. This is not the world's time. This is not your problem's time. This is yours and your creator's. The very person who gave us the breath in our lungs. We can even talk to each other. We can even pray to him. We can either praise, he, praise him. It's his time. So take this time to connect to your creator. Connect to your God. Realize that even though there's all this crazy stuff happening in the world, that he's bigger than all of it. And just praise him right now. Connect to him. Let him feel, fill you. to the 
darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your you God. You may be seated.
morning, church. Good to see you. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to come together this morning. It's a, it's a beautiful morning. We just see the evidence of you all around us. And Lord, as we look to our faith, this morning I pray, Lord, that you speak to us in, in such a way that we, we realize the gift that we have. We realize the opportunities that you give us. And we realize the direction that you have for us. So, Father, as we open our Bibles, I pray that we open our hearts and our ears. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We live in a time where we hear that things matter. People matter. Things matter. Places matter. But this morning, I want to ask you, what do you think matters most? The Lord matters. Our relationship with him matters. If we don't have that, what else does matter? So I've got some scripture this morning that I would like for us to look to, and, and I've got some questions that, that I hope that you'll follow along in your outlines, and as we go through these things, give you the opportunity to reflect a little bit. And I'm, I'm asking also, if you will, to take the opportunity to jot down on your outline just what comes to mind as we go through things, but take them home. And go over it again and, and, and pray about the things that, that we talk about here this morning. And then this evening we're going to study again. I want to invite everybody to that too. But I want you to consider faith this morning, maybe in a way you never have before. Let's begin in, our, in Romans in chapter 5. If you will, take your Bibles and go with me there to, to the first two verses in Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> Paul writes these words. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into, his, into this grace in which we stand, and we exult in the hope of the glory of God. That says a lot. What do you think it means to be justified by faith? It says we, having been justified by faith, as Christians, as disciples, as, as followers of Jesus Christ, do we see ourselves as justified by faith? And how does that happen? You know, I was, I was taught early on, in, in when, when you look at the word justified, what that means is it's just as if we had never sinned. We are, we are justified. We are righteous before God by our faith. How does that work? Because in James, we're said that if it's just a knowledge, an acknowledgement, if it's just knowing, if, if faith is nothing more than knowing something, the demons know the Lord, and it scares them. So if we're justified, it has to be more than just by knowing who the Lord is. It's our faith in the Lord. It goes on and says that, that that faith introduces us. It says, obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Have you ever put faith and grace together? Because we are justified by our faith, we are introduced into the grace in which we stand. What does that mean? Are we standing in grace? I want you to picture yourself standing before the Lord, justified because of our faith. And because we have faith in the Lord, we recognize that he extends his grace to us, which allows us to stand in his presence. That grace by our faith justifies the relationship that we have with the Lord. Have you ever considered faith meaning that? What comes to mind when you think of what, what faith is, what it does? In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, we read these words. It, it says that so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
Another question for you. Where did you learn about faith? Think with me for a minute. When, when did you learn what faith is? And who, who told you that? Do we learn faith by being taught what it is? Or do we learn faith by experiencing it? Have you ever come to the place to where you had to have faith in the Lord because you couldn't have faith anywhere else? Have you ever come to a situation that was so difficult, so overwhelming, so powerful that you just said, Lord, I've got to, I've got to believe that you're going to take care of this for me? Because I don't know where else to go. I don't know what else is going to happen. I don't know how else this is going to get resolved. We had to have faith. And after we saw how the Lord worked, uh, worked through that for us, then we began to put our faith into action because we realized that God does keep his promise. He does deliver. He does provide. He does direct. And the more we exercise that faith, the greater it becomes and the closer we come to the Lord, even to the point to where we begin to see that justification and that grace take place in our lives because we have put our full faith and our very existence in God's hands. And we see how it works. You see, I think for a lot of us, faith really doesn't mean anything more than we really hope. We say we have faith, but I wonder if it's real faith. In, in, in a book called Habakkuk in the Old Testament, in chapter 2, verse 4, we read these words, and this, this, comes, from, <clears throat> this comes from Romans when it's being quoted. They went back to Habakkuk and used part of the Romans passage in taken from Habakkuk, it says, Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him, but the righteous live by faith. If we are proud and we say we have faith in the Lord, what do we expect the Lord to do because we have faith in him? As opposed to the one who just says, Lord, I believe in you. You see, I think some of us, our faith is in an expected result when we go to God with prayer, in prayer, exercising faith. When we, when we have faith, our prayer to the Lord is, Lord, I need you to do this for me, and I believe that you will. I'm putting my faith in you to give me what I want. Is that what this is saying? No. Because if we make that statement, who are we asking to be served? Us. We want God to work for us. That's not in Scripture. God's not here to serve us. We are here to serve Him. So when we ask for God to work in our lives, when we, when we pray to God based on faith, are we praying for something to happen? Or are we praying for us to realize who God is? Oswald Chambers has said, I've, I've, I've quoted this before, he said, let us not pray to God to see what he will do. Let us pray to God to realize who he is. Can we have faith in God to the point that we submit our will, our lives, our situation totally in his hands to do what he would do? Knowing, Scripture tells us that all things work for good to those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. He will do what is best for us. May not be what we want, probably won't be what we want. But it will be what will serve him best. And that's where our lives are supposed to be centered. So do we, do we really see it that way? Oswald Chambers is quoted as, as saying this, the remarkable thing about God is that when you fear him, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear God, you fear everything else. How worried are we 
when we go to God in faith. Do we have faith in God because we're scared of what's going to happen? Or are do or do we rest in the Lord because of our faith okay with whatever does happen because we know our lives are in his hands? Con- consider this. <clears throat> if we are truly Christians, disciples, followers of Jesus Christ, then this says we stand in grace through faith in our relationship with him, realizing our sins are forgiven, our future is secure, our salvation is certain through Jesus Christ. Do we believe that with enough faith that we live by that? If you were to die this afternoon, are you assured that you'll see the Lord, that you'll be with him? Is your faith that strong? Are you afraid of death? Are you uncertain about the future? And does that anxiety that we have within us keep us from doing what the Lord has created us and called us to do, equipped us to do? Is our focus more on the worries in the world or is it in more of the opportunities that God gives us to share the love of Christ to other people? Are we more concerned about ourselves or about others. What does scripture tell us? Two greatest commands. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Is that in our priority list? Are we more concerned? Are we more aware of our love for the Lord and others than we are of ourselves? And our worries? And our, sca- and our, and our fears? Or is that what motivates our lives? How much of your life is lived in anxiety? and worry as opposed to comfort and assurance. A lot of that depends on where your faith is. So where where is your faith? In Hebrews chapter 1, if you read if you read the chapter the chapter 11 in Hebrews, it's called the the hall of faith and it talks about what faith has done with other people. By faith Abraham did this. By faith this happened. By faith that happened. You can read that account but in in chapter 11 verse 1 it says this Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It's the conviction of things not seen. How much of our lives is based on what we can see, what we can touch, what we can control, as opposed to those things that we can't? Where is our heart? Where is our thought? Where is our life based on doing things that are eternal or doing things that are temporary and physical. Do we live by what we can control or do we live by what God controls through us? You know, here again, where's your faith? It's been said that we must pray with our eyes on God and not on our difficulties. I think if we were to do that more, we would see God more. We would realize our faith more. It would grow stronger. We would be closer. How often do we pray to God not just to know God, but for him to do something for us? Have you ever just prayed to the Lord just to be in the Lord's presence? Just to realize this state we're in, standing in grace by faith, justified in him and thank him for that. Do we ever spend time being grateful to God in our prayers? Or they are all they are, or are they all based on wanting, needing his help, his deliverance from the mess that we've gotten ourselves into? How often does that happen? So here again, how does that affect our faith in the Lord? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 goes on and says, without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Do you know God for being God? Or do we think of God as something else? If we know that God is God, and and we know that the way we can make him happy is not by what we do, not by earning credit, not by earning his favor, 
but by knowing that it's impossible to please him without knowing who he is. I think every day we have a tendency to, to get up and think that we have to tilt the scales in the favor of we've done more good than bad so that we can earn favor in God and maybe that will bring us a little closer to him when what he's asking us to do is to realize you can never be good enough. You can never earn his favor. And he knew that before we were born. That's why he sent his son on the cross to die to pay the debt that we can't pay. To earn the favor that we can't earn. What we earn, what we deserve is the wrath of God. But Jesus stepped in the middle as our go-between, as our redeemer, as our savior, to give us this grace standing justified in God's presence. And if we have the real faith in knowing him for who he is, we would live a life of gratitude and worship more than we do. How thankful are we for who God is right now? Not when things are bad, not when things are tough, but right now this morning. How grateful are you that God is God and we are not? And how real is he in, his, in your life? And how real is that relationship based on faith? It's this powerful. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, we read, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. We can't boast about our relationship with God based on what we've done. It's based on who he is. It's based on what he has done, what he is doing, what he promises to do, what he will do. And we have faith in knowing that he is true to his past and his present and his future. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do we have faith that believes that, that depends on that, that lives by that? Or do we try something else? In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll make your path straight. How much of our faith is based on our control? How much of our life, the way we live our lives, how much of that is based on us and not God? What we understand, what we know, what we can do, what we're able to do as opposed to what God could do through us. We realize often that there are things we can't do. Only through God's gift, his grace, his wisdom, his, de his desire for us to be his can we do this. And here's an example. Let's say, I hate my neighbor. I don't like them. They stay up late. They play loud music. They keep me up. Their dog's always in our yard. There's always things going on, and I just don't like my neighbor. Don't know who he is. Never met him, but I don't like him. And I'm reading my Bible, and it says, pray for those. Love your neighbor. Do good to those people who do you wrong. I can't do that. I don't like them. They've done me wrong. They've done bad things to me. God needs to punish them because I'm a follower of Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm one of God's people. And so I pray to the Lord, Lord, I pray that, you know, these people move away, do something for them, and he says to me, love your neighbor. I said, well, no thanks. I'm good. And he says, no, you're not. Because my word says, if you know the right thing to do and you don't do it, that's sin. You know what you ought to do. You know that it says you're to love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. You're not loving your neighbor, so you're not loving me, so you're sinning against me. Now I'm convicted. I've got to go over to my neighbor. So what do I say? I love you. See you. 
Bible says I've got to, I've got to love you, so hey, here we go. Keep your dog out of my yard. What I should say, we go to our neighbor. First off, if you don't know who they are, introduce yourself. And say, I need to ask your forgiveness. I've allowed myself to be drawn into hatred against you. Nothing you've done. And I, I have I have the ill will toward you, and I know that it's the devil in my life, and I need to ask you to forgive me. And they say, Who are you? Could you do that? Could you go to your neighbor and ask their forgiveness for things that they have done against us? where we feel justified in being mad and being angry and being upset with them, and when we're convicted to the point that we know that that's a sin, can we go to them and ask their forgiveness? No, we cannot. But through Christ, all things are possible. When he gives us that conviction, he also will give us a way out. Scripture says there's no temptation that has overcome you that is a common to man. And when we ask, he will provide a way out. And that way out is to be obedient to the Lord and do what he tells you to do. Clear your conscience. Love your neighbor. Let them... So... You willing to do something like that? If we have faith in knowing who God is, not asking him to do for us, but to work. Submit our will, like we talked about last week, to be humble, to be mature, to see his It makes us more mature. It allows us to be bolder in our standards for the Lord but we have to be willing to walk by faith and not by sight 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verses 6 through 8 says therefore being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body we're absent from the Lord for we walk by faith not by sight we are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Now here again, can you say, I would rather be dead to this world and be alive in the Lord than anything? Paul himself says, if I'm here, I'm paraphrasing, God wants me to be here to serve him. I would rather be with him in heaven than here on earth. But because I'm here, I'm serving other people. He's walking by faith. Knowing that God has me here for a purpose, I'm going to serve. I'm going to write these letters. I'm going to work in these churches. I'm going to do what the Lord is calling me to do, to share the gospel with other people until he calls me home which is where I really want to be. Is that the way we're living our lives? Serving the Lord while we're here, anticipating the day that we'll be there by faith, knowing that we will? Or are we just surviving each day, hoping that things work out? been said that doubt is not always a sign that a man is wrong wrong it may be a sign that he's thinking think of your life right now how happy you are how content you are how close to the Lord you are and if you're not why aren't you 
Maybe it's not that you're doing something wrong. Maybe it's the Lord calling you to him. He has you where you're to be until he calls you home. And each and every day he gives you a day of life, he is blessing you with the opportunity to serve him and not yourself. And the more we live in that frame of mind, the greater our relationship with the Lord becomes. And then if we are so focused on the Lord and the thing of that we read about in Scripture, we don't have time to focus on woe is me because we are looking to encourage other people like he tells us to do through faith. Not because we can. We don't want to. Our faith in the Lord calls us to those things. C.S. Lewis says, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen. Not only in that I see it, but because by it I see everything. This morning, before the sun came up, we couldn't see very far, could we? But when the sun comes up, we see the sun. And when we see the sun, we also can see everything else more plainly. Same thing with the Lord. We have a tendency to just walk in the darkness. I think that's why so often in Scripture we're told to walk in the light. Jesus says, I am that light. And when we see the sun, when we see Jesus Christ, we see things clearer than we do, do just by ourselves. But what would the world call Jesus? What has the world called Jesus? What do we know him to be? Is there a difference? Sure there is. That's because we have seen Christ in our lives. The world hasn't and can't. But because we see Christ the way we should see Christ, now we see everything else clearer than before because everyone is his creation the planet is his creation there's nothing is that wasn't created by him scripture says we see him in all his creation let me read another quote by <clears throat> c.s lewis it's a little long and i need you to stay with me because he gets deep real quick if you've read his book mere christianity this is a quote taken from that book how real is christ to us he says this, I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him, Christ. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That's the one thing we must not say. He'd either be a lunatic on the level of the man or else a madman, or something much worse. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon. Or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe that he is our Lord and Savior? Do you believe that he was sent by the Father to die on a cross for our sins to give us the opportunity to have eternal life through him in heaven? Do you have that kind of faith? If we do, why do we struggle the way we do? And why are we waiting for God to do something to please us when all the while he's calling us to himself and there's nothing better? I want to close with this passage of scripture. Go to James chapter 2, verse 17. It says, even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself does that mean that faith isn't enough no 
but it means there is more to it. So you've got, I think there's five questions at the bottom of your outline. I want to go through these briefly. And as I said earlier, I want you to take this home and think about it. Talk about it. Think about your faith. I even urge you to come back tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going we're to have a group discussion about it, these things. The first one is, what is faith? What is faith to you? Is it a real hope that things work out the way you are? Or is it a recognition of who Jesus Christ is? And because of who he is, we are who we are. And we have what we have. Not what we want, but who we are and what we have, recognizing that everything we have comes from him. And what we do have is equipping us to do what he would have us do in the world. And when we don't follow that, we don't have peace and happiness and contentment and purpose in life. Secondly, what what has faith's introduction into grace shown you? Well, we talked about first off, if, if you've never thought about it before, realizing that the faith that we have justifies us and brings us into the state of grace to where God sees us as righteous. What, what has that done for you in your life right now? Realizing it's not God help me out of this mess. It's realizing where we stand in God's presence at all times. Is your perspective one of I'm in the presence of the Lord always? Or is your perspective I've made a mess and I need God to bail me out? Thirdly, where has your faith brought you? And I know we're here in church together and you're sitting in seats. I don't mean that. I mean spiritually. Where are you today because of your faith? Are we living by faith? And what can you say that is going on right now in your life that God has shown you by your faith? And then the last two kind of go together. Are we living by faith in God's will or by hope in our anticipated result? What is our faith calling us to do or calling us to become? Here at Big Hill, we believe, and we've been talking about this for some time now, we believe that God is calling us by faith to deeper discipleship, to be more mature as Christians to the point to where we realize and want to passionately evangelize our community so that the world around us will know who Jesus is. We believe that that is what God is calling us to do. And by faith, we are pursuing that with all that we have. Is it going to be difficult? Just like going to our neighbor. But can we do it? Absolutely, because that's what he's calling us to do. He will not provide a destination that he does not provide the means to get there. He will bless us for bringing him more people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because it says right here without faith it's impossible to please him so we have to step out on faith in order to please the Lord by doing what he's calling us to do and equipping us to do and here's an example for you to use individually do do you exercise faith to the point that you give it to God and allow him to give the results and we're okay with that how often have we prayed for something to happen and it doesn't there are people will who will tell you ministers in pulpits across the world today will tell you you pray for whatever you want and god will give it to you if you have enough faith because god wants you to be happy and if you don't get it you don't have enough faith That's not in here. That's not in his word. Matter of fact, he says you'll face trials and you'll face tribulations. And we've already experienced here when we made the decision to be more. (laughs) 
because now we realize where we can start. Now we know where God is leading us to start to begin to do what he's called us to do. Fix yourself. Take the plank out of your eye, then go out into the world, is what it says. So we have some things to fix at home, and that's what we're doing. But when we pray for God to do something and it doesn't turn out the way we want it to, do we realize that that is God's answer to our prayers? It's not that we don't have faith. It's that we've been misplacing our faith. We've been praying for for the results rather than to recognize who God is. We pray for someone to get well. They don't. They go home to be with the Lord. And we think God didn't answer our prayer. Well, what do you think the prayer of the person we were praying for was? Maybe they saw it like what we just talked about. There. God has called me home. I have my reward. I win. I'm in the presence of the Lord. Can we accept that? as God's will, that he rewards a faithful servant and takes him home to be with him? Or are we so selfish, all we see is what we wanted? God works things out to where he gets the glory and he gets the honor because he's the one that put everything into place in the first place. Our our job, our life, is to be spent recognizing who he is and what he does and that he willingly, in spite of who we are, asks us to be in his family. And that faith in that alone should get us through this world with no problem. So think about these things. And maybe, maybe the Lord's speaking to you right now in in a way that he's saying, Come closer. Be more faithful. Maybe maybe you need to speak to somebody about that. Maybe you have some questions. Like I said, tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to talk about some things. Maybe you know somebody who you have seen live a good life of faith, and you go to them for help. I'd be glad to talk to you, too. Maybe you need to come down here and pray to the Lord. Don't worry about what other people are saying or thinking. Maybe the Lord's calling you closer to himself, and you feel a need to just come and pray. That's fine. Maybe you see the need to follow in full obedience and be baptized. Where do you think that comes from? He's calling you to him there. There's a lot of things if we will just open our hearts and open our ears, the Lord will speak and he will teach. Be still and know that he's God. Quit fighting. Quit living for the world and start walking by faith faith and not by sight and allow the Lord to lead and speak and comfort and direct. Let's grow our faith. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, as always, we, we ask that you speak to us. So often, Father, we're so busy by what's going on in the world and so worried about the things that are going around us and through us and the condition that this world is in physically and spiritually and we realize Lord that it's a mess help us to realize that that's not our greatest concern what matters most is our relationship with you and the love that we have for you and for others to live for you, to see the opportunities that you give us, to see you at work in our lives, and to realize the glory that's in that that is given to you through the worship of us to you. Lord, help us to see those opportunities. Help us to seize them. Help us, Father, to be more Christ-like, to be more like your disciples. Just now, Father, I ask that you enter our hearts, remove whatever is there keeping us from you, and speak to us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
I love the fact that we have the people that we have that do the music here at church. They always uh, they always seem to know the right songs and the right the right message in those songs that, that goes along with everything. And as we prepare for communion in, in, in first service this morning, we we sang the hymn "Blessed Assurance" for communion. And and in that song, one of the lines. All the day long and then we just sang he can take our word he can take the lies that we're tangled up into and he can turn it around and make it beautiful how often during the day do we focus on that the fact that that we are justified by grace through faith standing before the Lord righteous how often do we think of that as we go through the day and say, that's my story. That's my song. And we praise the Lord all day with it. And how often do we think of the things that we've said and the things that we've done, the lies that we've bought into, even though the lies that we've told. And God forgives, deserving of eternal death and separation from the Lord, and he's made something beautiful out of it. Do we take that with us outside this building? Do other people see that in our lives? As we take these emblems this morning, in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, let's remember the price that it took to make this beautiful, to give us the opportunity to worship all day long, every day, out of gratitude and out of, out of rejoicing because of the love that he has for us in spite of ourselves. Pray with me. Father, as we take these emblems this morning, I pray, Lord, that we focus on nothing more than your love for us. The love that went to the cross, the love that took on our sins, the love that was resurrected and offers us the opportunity to spend eternity in heaven with you. Lord, help us to, to be grateful, to celebrate. Let that be our song all the day long. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
I want to thank you for being with us this morning, and uh, uh, I pray that you'll come back this evening, and, and, and let's go deeper in, into this. I've got just a, just a couple of announcements briefly. Uh, you'll see on the back of your outline there's a whole bunch of things going on, and I just want to draw your attention to a couple of things that are taking place this week. Uh, this evening at 4 o'clock, we're having our, our church board meeting. And we want to invite everyone to, to come to that. We'd love to have you there to, to just to know what's going on with the board. Also to voice your opinion or your concerns about anything that may be on your heart. or uh, just, just to be there with us and get your input. We'd love to, love to have that. Of course, 6 o'clock this evening, going deeper. And then uh, Monday and Tuesday, I don't know, I hope you haven't experienced it this morning, but we've got some flies in the house. And uh, we're going we're gonna to have that fixed. So Monday and Tuesday, they're going to be treating the building here. We're going to, the offices will be closed here. Tuesday, they're still going to have the COVID testing, but they will be outside, out front. So Monday and Tuesday, the church facilities here will be closed. Wednesday uh, is family night. I'm going back to, back to the, the pattern that we've had. Last couple of weeks, we've had things going on, and we've kind of pushed it back a little bit. We're going to go back to our studies. Uh, have something for all groups. I'm going to have the, the heart of the family thing. We're going to pick that back up where we left off. Also starting uh, this sun, this Wednesday and all through December, Art is going to be leading uh, a Christmas study. Uh, each Wednesday night, it's going to be like standalone sessions. It's not like if you miss one, you're missing something. But it's going to be a great opportunity to... to uh, to get a better understanding of Christmas, I've, I've read some of what he's been putting together, and he's he's very detailed, and it's a very good very good study. So, I want to invite you to that. Uh, also, Wednesday evening at seven o'clock, our elders study is scheduled. Then Saturday, we're having our uh, men's breakfast. That's at, at nine o'clock, and it's our leaders' discipleship session. Also, so the elders and deacons, we're we, we're inviting all of them to be there with us at two at, at that also. Then at two o'clock. Uh, Kelly's going to be leading the, the, the women's ministry into a jingle and mingle Christmas party. Everyone's invited to be here between 2 and 4 o'clock on Saturday. Everything else you can see uh, is, is listed on the, on the announcements. If you will, take them home, put them on your refrigerator, and, and, and be, be active, be a part of what we have going on here. We'd love to have you take part in all the things that we, we're doing. That being said, um, one more thing. Everybody should have these on your table. If they're not on your table, then we have some out in the foyer. These are invitations for our Christmas at Big Hill, all the events that are going on through December. Uh, it's a postcard. You can mail them to somebody or just hand them to people as, as you, you meet them. We'd love to make a lot of people aware of that and have a good turnout for the events that we have scheduled here. I believe that's it. Uh, if you will, please stand. Let's have a prayer. We'll be dismissed. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your gifts. And as we come to, to a time of Christmas where there's a lot of focus on gifts, Lord, help us to realize what we already have. We may be making lists and, and looking for things that, that we can buy or have, but Lord, help us to realize the gifts that you've given us, the gift of faith that we have in you, the opportunity that we have to, to allow you to work through our lives and make us stronger. So, Father, as we leave here, help us to realize the opportunities to exercise that faith, to do the things that, that maybe we've never been able to do before because we've only thought of our power and our strength, but we haven't placed our faith in you to do miraculous things. So, Lord, we pray now that as we leave here, we'll see those opportunities. We'll take advantage of those, and we'll watch you come alive like never before in our lives. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for being with us. tired and bring your shame bring your guilt and bring your